Hi guys, today I want to teach you a little bit about Photoshop gradients. Um, just want to get in there and teach you a little bit about how to get around the gradient editor tool, how to apply gradients, and also how to save them for future use. So let's get started. We are in Windows 10, but if you happen to be on an Apple system, that's okay too. Uh, the features are all going to be the same. Okay, so getting into gradients a little bit in Photoshop. I'm just starting with a new Photoshop file and I'm on my layer one, which is selected right here. So I want to choose my gradient tool to get started, which is right here in the tools menu. So when I click this tool, I haven't clicked it yet, but watch what happens up here. I have an options tool right here according to the move tool, which happens to be selected. But when I click the gradient tool, it gives me a whole new set of options. And this is called your options bar. And I have um, different features that I can use with the gradient tool. This, uh, all the way over to the left, it is actually a gradient tool preset picker. We'll have to get into that in a future video. Um, this one is the gradient tool where you actually choose your gradient. So this is the gradient picker. And we have a whole bunch of features over here. We can choose different types of gradients. We have a linear and that little tool pop up right here tells you exactly what they are. So this is the radial gradient, we have an angle gradient, a reflected gradient, and a diamond gradient. You can choose your different modes here. It, right now it's on screen mode. I like my on normal, but this is kind of similar to your layer modes that you have over here. And I have an opacity right now of 90%. I want that at 100% for my gradient. I could reverse the gradient, just meaning the direction of that the colors are coming from, depending on where you start and end when you draw your gradient tool out. And um, dither and transparency, again, I have transparency on. I can turn that off completely right there if I don't want to use it. So, okay, so I have my gradient tool selected. Now I want to choose my colors. Right now it's defaulting to the white to gray gradient. Uh, it'll default to whatever you use last. Basically. So here in my gradient picker, I can choose the drop down hour right here, and that's going to open up the gradient picker. And we already have this gray to white. I can select any gradient that I want, and you see that my selected gradient changes up here. If I go into my settings here, I have a whole new menu of options. And uh, one of the options I can do is I can actually load my gradients. Right now I'm in the default gradients, but I can actually load more gradients. Um, if I were to save, I can actually save my own preset gradients. I could set like, say five of them at a time and, uh, and then reload them all at the same time later on. So that's a nice feature. I can load some preset that Photoshop has just automatically built in. Uh, just to show you, I'll load the color harmonies. And I have a choice when I load that, I can append it or I can replace what's already here. So I'm just going to choose to append. And that's going to add the new gradients from the color harmonies palette right in here. And that's a preset gradient. I'll show you later how to save a bunch of them at the same time. So right now what I want to do is I want to start, we're just going to start from the simple gradient here of the gray. So to do that, I can't uh, start fresh with no gradient. I have to start with something. So what I'm going to do is just click that um, little swatch right here, and that's going to open up my gradient editor. And it already loaded the white to gray in there. So going through here, I have the same presets that I had loaded when we were clicking the little drop down menu over here in our options palette. They've just kind of moved over here now into our gradient editor. I have um, the name. Um, we're going to change the name when we start a new gradient later on. And we have the gradient type would be solid. I can choose noise where it would uh, just kind of show some speckles and dots. So if you didn't want like super smooth, you wanted some speckles in there. And uh, the smoothness. The smoothness is kind of weird. I've never had a reason to use this. What this does is it allows for a smooth transition from, say, the white all the way to the gray. I could reduce the number, and what will happen is I would get some banding right here. And um, I can't see why you would want to do that. Maybe certain effects, but I, I've never wanted to use that. And uh, this what does is just adds more colors 
between more shades of the white to the gray and that's how you get it nice and smooth these are your transparencies for each individual color so if I hold my mouse over here you'll see the tooltip just popped up and it's called the opacity stop and this is the color spot stop that is associated with that opacity stop and if you notice I just I just pressed this color stop with my mouse and um, that gave me the option down here to be able to change that color if I want to. So what I'm going to do is maybe I'll do something a little blue. I'm changing this around a little darker blue perhaps. Click OK and that changed the color. My opacity I left that at 100% but if I did want to drop that that would change the opacity on just this particular gradient. I'm going to keep that at 100 for now. On this particular color I mean. And let's go and choose this color and maybe choose something brighter in the blue. Let's add a third color in the center here. Right here. And what I'm doing to add the color is I just clicked right here in the gray area underneath the gradient bar and that added another color stop and it automatically defaulted it to gray. I just kind of moved it right back into the center at the 50% location. Notice how when I move this, these numbers change. I could always go in here and type the number and have it automatically move back in the center again. I want to change that color. Let's see, maybe something a little on the yellow side. Click OK. OK, now these little diamonds here these are your midpoints between each color on your gradient so this midpoint right here is associated with this color and I can actually move the yellow out to be a little longer which would shorten up the blue I'm actually going to tighten that up a little bit and you notice in the location down here that number is changing again I want to do the same thing here and tighten it up a little bit on this side so in order to get this color stop uh, not the color stop the uh, color midpoint diamond to show up I would just have to select one of these color stops and you see how it came up I could even select this one too and it brings that one up so I want to get this just a little bit tighter move that in all right so now if I were to just click OK I wouldn't be able to load this exact gradient again to use in the future, so I want to save it. So I'm going to start by giving it a name, and let's just call that blue, yellow, blue. And I want to save it now into the presets. So I'm going to click New, and that saved it. It just appended it right at the end of my colors swatches here and you see my tooltip popped up that tells me the name of the gradient. Now you don't want to click new before you choose your name because it'll just come up with the word custom and you actually want to choose uh, create a name first. Now another, another feature is that um, this is going to save this in the presets for that's my cat <laughs> my cat's vocalizing here and uh, so now I can use it in the future in any file that I open in Photoshop as long as my preferences don't get damaged sometimes your preference files go kaput and you have to reset them and that would uh, kind of get rid of that for, for good and uh, so that's not really you know it's just a chance you take but if you made a complicated gradient that took a long time and you wanted to save it for future loading you can do what we just did here by clicking new and creating the name first and then clicking new or you could always save a preset and that's what this save button is for you might have thought we would have to click save to get that gradient to go into the presets here but no um, if you want to save it out as part of your you can save it into a folder so I would click save right here and I'd have to choose a name again but in this case I wouldn't choose blue yellow blue because it's not only saving this particular gradient swatch when I do this it actually saves this whole preset panel so all of these gradients would be saved with this and it saves it out into the Photoshop folder into the presets 
and into your gradients file. And um, that's a good feature because then I could go in here, say I have five or six gradients and I want to have them all maybe in some kind of a categorization, maybe they're harmonies or just a different color style that I'm using across multiple documents, then I just want to keep it. That's a good feature to have. And then um, if I wanted to reload them, I would just click the load button in the future and that would load them up because it puts it in this file. And that's going to um, also be protected against your preferences. So if your preferences do get damaged, this is still out here in your fo Photoshop folder. The only time you would lose that is if you ever completely replaced Photoshop, I guess. So I'll just cancel that. I'm going to show you. So I kind of like my gradient that I have here. So I'm going to click OK. And you see how it changed it right here, telling me that that is up in the queue and it's ready to use with my gradient tool. So in order to apply it with the gradient tool, you just kind of draw with the tool and go from bottom to top. I have my radial selected right here. You see that? So I want to go back to linear. That's kind of a cool feature, but you can get some really, really good effects with this. That's the linear. See, this is the, uh, that's the angle. Let's see what the angle does. Oh, that's interesting. So you can get some really cool effects with just playing around with it. And, and the way you draw, I could start maybe from the center here with my diamond, go out to the end. Let's go back to the radial. And you notice how it's completely replacing. It's not just adding on. Um, right, I don't. I want to get a completely straight line here. I'm in back in my linear tool, so I'm going to hold down my shift key, and that's going to give me a complete straight line there. And remember how I tightened up those colors on the midpoint with the little diamonds inside the gradient dialog box. That's why this is pretty tight. So just one uh, quick last thing I want to show you is that if you want to adjust this gradient and maybe I, I don't want this to be such a quick transition between the blue and the yellow and I want to loosen that yellow up and maybe make it a little longer right here, I can't just um, take this gradient that's existing here and fix that. That's there permanently. You cannot change that. So what I did was I just opened this up and as soon as I clicked in this area it started a new custom gradient for me. So I would actually just have to start with this gradient and then create a new gradient basically. So I would go here, maybe lengthen that yellow out just a touch, and I would have to go through the same feature again blue, yellow, blue, click new, and the new one would save. But I could always easily go back to the one where that yellow is tightened up. Just wanted to show you that. Um, the gradient tool is an absolutely wonderful feature. There are so many different looks that you can get with the gradient tool. So just get in there and play around. So I hope you found this video helpful. Go ahead and subscribe down below. That way you can get the alerts when I post new reviews and tutorials.